Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and pool fans everywhere, thanks so much for tuning in to this AccuStats production here at the 24th Annual Derby City Classic. We're here at the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge, where 16 of the greatest players in the world are all battling it out on this Bigfoot 5x10 super tight diamond. Very tough field. We started with 16. Now we are down to just two. Derby City, are you guys ready for the championship? I know this is a coveted title, a very tough tournament to win, and they both want it really bad, and it's about time to find out just who's gonna get it. Here we go, first up, he was winner and defeated John Mora in round one. Joshua Filler, last year's defending champion in round two, and Lee Van Corteza to get here. He's the 2017 American Straight Pool champion and the 2018 European Nine Ball champion. Sponsored by Erg, Buren, and Predator from Lubin, Poland. Make some noise for Kinder, Conrad Ushishin. And his opponent has won this event before. He defeated Max Eberle in round one, Jason Shaw in round two, and Roberto Gomez to get here. Five-time U.S. Open champion, reigning world champion, and 16-time member of Team USA. Sponsored by Q-Tech, Rasson Billiards, VNEA Pool League, How Tips, and Andy Cloth from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, USA. The South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. We're lagging for the break. Our referee is Ricky Bryant and sending it up to the AccuStat Skybox. Hello and welcome to the finals of the Bigfoot Challenge. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones here with all of you. Jeremy, any opening thoughts on this one? Well, two guys that definitely deserve to be here, in my opinion. They played better every match. Kind of uh, expect the same here. and um, Not to be d disappointed, Conrad wins the lag. Have to give a little edge to Shane as far as the break, but just not a whole lot, just because uh, Conrad really has put a, a very effective break together pretty much the entire tournament. Had a few dry breaks at the end last night, but has anyone shot a higher TPA all week than his last match? I don't think so. Yeah, that was a phenomenal uh, accounting. Yeah. Super straight shooter, super smooth. He got uh, all the right positions, took advantage of every op opportunity that he had, and then things kind of fell good for him a couple times too. So yeah. won the lag, raced to 11. Okay, he's missed the corner balls, and he got a kiss on the four railer, which hasn't happened to him pretty much the entire event. The one thing that has stood true in this event, we've had some matches that have gone kind of neck and neck uh, towards the end. We've had one kind of big comeback, but for the most part, if you've gotten a three or four game lead, you've pretty much held on to it and won the match. Shane trying to tuck the cue ball in by the seven here. Yeah, that's a lot of confidence there. And of course the shot agreed uh, with a little help from the six and the two. I think there is a sliver there, Mark, but it's kind of like that sliver that doesn't do much because he's going into the nine with the cue ball. But this may be a position, if the three doesn't play, you may hit this with just a lot of speed trying to knock the one up table mm -hmm. and see what happens. Wow, try that again. It's the entire ball. Yeah, That's, but go through them. Yeah. Go between them. Uh, I, see, yeah. I think it had to curve to get through them anyways. Well, he did because of the speed that he hit that. You know he was massaying to get to the edge of the one. Right. And it just took and then yeah, I was kind of spin. I, I was kind of joking knowing it was a massa, but look at the angle of the one and the nine. It's mm -hmm. almost like it had to take a left turn to get, get through those balls. Now, he wants to find a route because the two's near to be able to break open the 3-7 while having position on the 2. There's just so much traffic. He could cut the 1 in the side, stun to the bottom rail and underneath. That's what he was looking at at first, I think. So he's, now he's going to use the 2 is what he's looking at. Instead of trying to open them now, I think he's going to come across or hold, I don't know which yet, and gain an angle to shoot the 2 and go into the 3-7. You'd think he'd come all the way across if he could, but now he's going to no, bump he to knows, six. Yeah, that's he knows pretty sharp. He, he figured to hit a little bit more on the bottom of the six.
to get a little bit of more angle to go into the three seven. And the problem with stunning into two balls like that, especially when they're near the rail, they want to double kiss, not open that much, and you could trap yourself. If you could follow into those balls, Mark, it's a lot different. So he's not going to take any chances. He's going to try and put him behind the nine. Uh, oh, no. Super soft, super soft. Just behind use the, the seven. seven. Yeah. Well, this usually uh, pretty good. And what he did there is he opened them. So it's not like surrender ball in hand and Shane has to play another safety. He's playing like he can hit the edge. He's trying to. Well, he's on two. Yeah, but as great as these guys are, right, you got to try and run out with this table. You don't want them kicking, making a great hit with you having ball in hand. I think he can cut the three and has a path to come across. I don't know if I would use the second rail here, Mark. I might just float this. That's what I was worried about. That kiss on the six. Still mm -hmm. okay, though. Yeah, got him closer to the four ball than he was planning on. And perfect position. Yeah, here more, though. That side pocket is big off that six. If he catches a little more of it. That's, that's the thing about pool, though, right? You got to gamble. You got to take a little chance here and there. Talking with Shane just before the match, and we were talking about how he's calmed down this transition backswing to four swing and he, he agreed and he smiled <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is you know even as great as he is um, it's not going to show up every shot just yet you know it's going to take a little more time to just keep doing it and it's just going to improve and improve and he'll feel the difference more than we'll see the difference of it getting better mm-hmm now a little decision. Stun across for the eight in the corner with the nine near. Do you want to pull the ball back behind? I like keeping it simple, coming straight across. See, that's why you get that easy movement on the cue ball with that nice transition. When you're pocketing as pure as he is right now, then your speed control is really good. You know, oh, he yeah. just is using the economy of motion here to get the maximum result. This uh, enables consistency. Well, what people don't realize is he's not steering the cue. It's still accelerating. It's just uh, kind of a fooler uh, that you get kind of easy power right there at impact when the transition's nice. That's kind of why it looks effortless when people do things right, just because you don't really see the speed mm -hmm. too much, you know? Right. And what you do see is with players playing in a cruder way that they see you see jerking and uh, abrupt transitions. They still pocket balls, but not as frequently as Shane Van Boney. And this is a sport of consistency. Yeah. I tell people when I was on the road a long time ago, long before cell phones, and, you, you know, we had a lot of fun going and just playing random people, you know. Sure. There wasn't no hustle to it. Just go in and, you know, say, hey, we're here to play some pool. They'd pick a they're a good player or whatever. And if I saw that quick stroke or whatever, it just, I settled in pretty easy. But if I saw someone mm -hmm. kind of swinging the cue nice, it grabbed my attention pretty quickly. Just because, you know, you play right. long sessions, you know that quick probably ain't going to hold up. Right, right. Now, these weren't world champions, obviously. These are in the early days of playing pool. But still, it still kind of rings true. A lot of great matches going on in the one pocket and the bank pool. The bank pool getting near double digits on the rounds, maybe not in round nine, maybe, or something like that. First time we'll see Shane's break, and it improved as well, I think, in the last match. Six ball. Hmm. Boy. What's the breaking run a, number, by the way? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. 11. I'll tell you what it is. He's To get to this stage of the tournament through three matches, he's won 33 racks, 11 of them by virtue of break and run out. So one-third of the wins. That's pretty strong. 
Yeah, we were talking earlier in the match when he played Mark and I, if you weren't watching, and we put a little total on uh, his, his break and runs for today. We'll see he's at five for today. So knowing, you know, when that finish line gets near, you said he had 11, right? Well, he's had five in one match today, right? All right. Yeah. All, right. All right, he's got to put the draw stroke, it looks like. Now, I go ahead and come back with this. Don't worry about the speed too much. Um, you should be relatively close to the three, and, and you can manipulate if you get a little straight. Yeah, I like that. Let it out a little more. That way you don't end up short. You know, and you, if you end up a little short, you're probably really close to the ball, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, this shot tends to play better two cushions rather than one. Yeah, especially on the slick table. It's a little more in your hands if you go two cushions. You know, if you go one, it may kind of drift on you with the new felt, right? Right. This way you you cinch not getting behind the seven. Well, you can't say cinch, but you'd have to mess it up pretty good to get behind the seven, where if you go one rail, it doesn't take much to get behind that seven. I was going to say, he's playing so good, I wouldn't roll this. I would attack coming across two rails for the five in the corner with the seven over the side. When you're playing good, keep that stroke going. Why change it to a roll your ball forward to hit a gap for the five in the side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just the right way to play that, even yeah. if you're not playing good. <laughs> well, a lot of people would think, oh, if I can roll it forward, why would I ever draw it? And, right. and it's a, just a little different mindset, I think. And that's a very clear cut mind, by the way, for Shane. Like, he's feeling good is yeah. my point. Yeah. When you, when you come back two cushions on that previous shot that you mentioned, now you can pace that ball down into the corner rather than roll it down to the corner, right. which makes it harder to pocket. He could do it either way, though. Yeah, it absolutely. Be a big problem, but this is the highest yield absolutely. route. Absolutely. Just two cushions around, I think, or is he going to go Absolutely, two Just cushions, two. yeah. Yeah, that's what it's just the same thing. He's keeping on making that same aggressive impact, you know, instead of kind of rolling it a little bit. Yeah. When, when you're on the fence, stay with a little bit more rather than a little bit less. All right, he should be able to kill this if he wants. Oh, nice shot here, and that's a smart shot. Yeah, that risk getting in between, just go ahead and yeah. move the cue ball down where it's comfortable and you can use that same speed. Yeah. Nice break and run out there. Jeremy originally said that he could get eight on the day. He's now at six. Conrad Ushishin have a chance. Yeah, and it's been pretty much the center of the pocket. And it's pretty much the real scary thing if you're watching Shane. Very uh, flowing. And like that last shot getting on the 10, I, a lot of good players, self included, would overlook that little draw over. And sometimes, again, that's the 10-footer that offers you a little more space behind mm -hmm. the ball, especially mm -hmm. if you're playing well and you're calm about shooting the ball into the side. So is he thinking better or playing better? It's close. Yeah, well, I think, you know, when as you get more confident and playing better, you start to feel it. I think he's really in that feel-it mode. Yeah, well, we discussed the other day how Fetter plays a lot to where he makes a lot of similar strokes. And... Uh, under the heat, if you can do that, it helps. Three in the seven, right behind the head ball. Two in the six on the corners. Uh, they're going long again. And the four pillar that's gone in that lower left corner is getting kissed now. Interesting. Oh, man, this is an awkward angle here to try and get the cue ball past the five. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, you can see him shaking the face. This There's is a, nothing easy about this. No, sir. You may take your chances just getting by the five, trying to lay the one underneath the seven in, in like a little awkward manner. Look at this shot. Wow. Pinking cross corner, primarily to get the cue ball down there behind the four and nine. He could, oh, no, the one railed it. Oh, he, he'll take this, that's for sure. Hmm. Well, well, he was banking into the seven, though, correct? Yeah, he just yeah. hit it thick Two is all. You can right. see how slow the cue ball came away, right? He right. was definitely trying to run to the end rail. All right, this is where you have to slowly come out of here. 
That way you get the most out of the cue ball and you don't lose your line. Easy to rattle that ball. Yeah, because you're trying to cheat it. Wow, how are they rolling so far for him, though? Rolling along. In the infamous words of Scott Kiddo, <laughs> rolling along. Okay, you can kick and try and hit it thick, trying to have it bank up the table, maybe cross side. You could try to nip it. I, nipping it's okay as well. But Oh, a nice shot here. Look at this. Mm. Little three cushion shot there for you. Almost got it right in behind the seven. Didn't look like he could get there, but he did easily. Yeah, the ball hooked a little bit. Now, this is where before, after a missed ball, even as difficult as it was, Shane would carry that a little bit. Um, we'll see how he leaves it behind. Good look here at how smooth and still he stays. Slow back. Pretty oh, darn how good. good was that? Look at that. Got through that ball so smooth. It's mm. easy to follow through when you're comfortable. It's not so easy to follow through when you're not comfortable. And you can see how much accuracy that helps to add. Doesn't mean you never miss. It means you miss way less. Yeah, this is a little odd as well now. This has got to be paid attention to. Oh, wow. How nice on the kill shot there, using a little bit of the pocket. And I think as much as anything, the softer shots is really where it's going to pay the dividends for him. I mean, he'll obviously get cleaner with the... Mm -hmm. Shots with the power. We, he's already shown that. But once you make a good transition on the lighter ones is where, you know, those can be the real worrisome shots for the pros is when they don't, you know, get to let their stroke out a little bit, especially when under pressure. Mm, boy, he's playing good. Yeah, he's, uh, he's hitting the ball where he wants, and you can tell, like you said, the speed control, that tells you that he's hitting the object ball. Pretty perfect. Yeah, this one may have gotten a little awkward. <laughs> Nothing he hasn't dealt with a million times before. He's a little disappointed with himself, though. He knows he has to work. Yeah, and it's kind of even him. It's got to fall there, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's real pool. It does, the pool's not nice. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's a hard sport. I think the 10-footer helps you here, too, being able to draw back underneath uh, a little bit. You see, it's just a little more space to where you don't worry about it kind of pulling right on you. Yeah. Especially when you're hitting the ball well. Stay off the rail. You can handle a little more. Oh, my goodness. He didn't pause. I mean, yeah, took it for granted a little bit. Oh, it was like he got hung up in trying to get the cue ball from the rail. Well, this is what uh, Conrad needed to get going here, because he was ready to fall behind three zero. Yeah, and Shane breaking in the next game. So now it's like a huge turn of uh, mental events. Wow. <laughs> Shane's got to be able to leave it behind, and Conrad feels like a million bucks. Well, we have, we're not used to seeing a miss like that from Shane, but that is a testimonial to four and an eighth inch pockets and uh, just a hint of a loss of focus momentarily. Yeah, and just tried to get off the rail. I was trying to say just pinch it and just take a little more cut from above. You know, that way you can kind of smooth it. When he looked, I don't think he was worried as he struck the ball. Yeah, I don't either. It, well, it hit inside the jaws. Yeah. That goes in on you know, almost every table but this one. Yeah, I was thinking uh, what I was talking about prior to the match, how those those early leads, you know, 3-4-1, 3 nothing, 5-2, those have held up as he was down on that nine ball. And it takes a serious toll on you, too, to get behind three or four games right away. Yeah, well, this will this will help you. Uh, if you can get a shot. I don't think you're going to get a shot. Maybe. He's got a look. Doesn't have a shot. It's going to be difficult because he doesn't have all the ball. Now, if the four wasn't there, 
he's like one of the best ever at edging that ball when it's next to the pocket and mm -hmm. being able to escape. But I think the four might cut off the escape of the cue ball. I'm a little worried about that. He doesn't seem to be too worried, though. Well, he must be banking this away somehow. Crossing it over, I don't know. Oh, he could see enough. And I think he had to put a little left on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To try and make the cue ball go left, maybe even get by the 10 a hair. And you might say, boy, he should have got the two ball all the way down one on that hit. The speed might not have uh, worked with what he needed to do with the cue ball. Yeah. And two, that's just a super hard shot. Well, I think he had to throw the two a little bit to where it makes sure it doesn't catch the three, you know, with that left English to where yes. it, it kind of throws the bank a little bit. And the speed wouldn't let it do. Right. You know, so what a shot that was now. Yeah, especially because he, he made a little dink nine ball and ten, but that was the first real kind of shot he had to take on. And that's just the way he played in the previous match and then ran out behind it. Very good cueing action there. Very controlled cue ball simultaneously. Yeah, for the long, a, a, a player that carries a long bridge, he goes through the cue ball probably better than anyone I've yeah. ever seen that carries a long bridge. Now, his hand is still at 90 degrees in the back, which is great. But for some reason, other people do that still, and they still break down a little early, and the cue doesn't want to go through as much. He still does. Uh oh, if this catches the seven, just... Uh, He's we've okay. all had that, right? Yes, we have. Minor heart palpitations. Yeah, and that's not luck. You just got to gamble sometimes a little bit when you're coming back with the cue ball. Capacity crowd here for the finals. Okay, so great break off. Pretty good safety from where he was at, at least making him come with it, and Conrad sure did. Yeah, the super run out thus far to get this far to this rack from where the balls were to begin with. Yeah, good stun draw. I think he just plays for the corner on the nine to me anyways. Yeah. Look at the control. I mean, he's those mid-range shots, I mean, he's just spot on. And this will tie up the match. Two War games apiece. Opening shot to give you Shish in the game and tie sings at 2-2. Two, two. He'll have the break in rack five. Shout out to Madison Carter listening in from St. Charles, Missouri. Just a swift game and game and a half. The, a little different feeling to me mm -hmm. in the arena for sure. Right. Got our old pal Carl Bone listening in. Carl's a nine ball specialist. <laughs> he is. Great guy. Loves pool. wondering he lowered the tip a little more than he had um you know he had a dry break right in the first so that one just straight off mm. no pop on the cue ball really yeah, that's gonna hurt yeah and uh nothing quicker will relieve the mind of a mistake than ball in hand right <laughs> that is so true jeremy you're struggling all of a sudden you come to the table with this where you see a real way to get out well, that was a nice little nifty shot right there. Going by the three, gained the perfect angle. No real hard work now. I don't know how well this is going to bounce. That's just fine. Now, this is where if you get good at the one rail stun. See where he's looking right there? Just casually let light stun up there. You could draw it. I like just coming one rail. 
there. Just got to learn these shots. If you learn them, they're so easy like that. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's delicate, and you can believe how easy that gets away from you. Yeah. Well, what the thing is on those shots, people don't commit. They, They give in a little bit at impact, and you don't, you know, the draw doesn't grab the ball just right. You end up a little awkward short. But if you can work on those shots under pressure, they're pretty good. And a lot of times the guys become, you know, at least in America, from playing some seven-footer. You know, seven-footer, that traffic, different things, you get used to a little more of that one-rail stun control because you got balls in the way or you got one reason or another. Yeah. Yeah, that's that better transition there. All right. Well, Shane's happy to reclaim the lead from that break. Yeah, especially he gets the break next. 3-2. From the scratch. Has a lead once again after five racks, three games to do, and it's his break in rack seven. We got Rhett Butler tuned in. Somehow they had a draw for the finals. He's got Shane Van Boning, $50 pool. That's pretty cool. And we got Bob Holtz listening in from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Glad to have you alongside there, Bob. He was here for a couple days, had to go home, had to work. Yeah, tons of viewers. And it's the last match of the 2023 Big Footer. Bigfoot challenge, excuse me. Now, Shane noticed that he didn't make either of those side balls one of the breaks. He did make the the sides on one of them, but the corner ball, the four railers, what went the first break. And then Conrad's missed the side balls also. What do you think does that? Just speed? I mean, just contact? Just timing? I, I think it's a lot of the timing in the swing, but... I still can't really totally put my finger on it. Yeah, there's a variety of things. Yeah. Um, if anyone's perfected the art of breaking, though, it is Shane Van Boning. Well, if you notice, a lot smoother with the takeaway right there. <laughs> and I've always said his best backswing is Whoa. his break shot. Look at that. There's nothing on the rail near the side pocket. That always makes the run out look way better. When there's a ball frozen near the side pocket on the rail, that's... It's always the tough position play. Everything here is open. Getting yeah. on the three would be the only, and that shouldn't present any issue for him. Boy, he'd love to get to that back rail, but he can't near the two. I mean, it's just too risky, I think, unless he, yeah, he's just going to go with a little stun maybe here. Keep it simple. He must really like the rail first mm. is all I can tell you. No, the, but the speed's precarious playing it that way. Well, it's, you don't get the feeling of the speed coming from the center of the table like you do coming to more right. down the side rail. So right. If you nick it or hit it a little heavier, it changes it dramatically from here. Yeah, you could easily get on the side rail here and have to really Super cut the soft. three like this. Yeah. Really cut the three more. But that's okay. you got to be pretty happy overall because you could easily be froze, you know, mm-hmm. and the four's up in the side pocket. And it lays natural to get from the four to the five. So big shot. So he's going to just roll this in. He's not going to try to get the cue ball three rails. Just two rails, lay it underneath the 10 here. Now watch the backswing. If it just subtly comes away or if it kind of jumps a little bit, that's good. That usually is a good one for him. Great. Just don't let it get away from you where the stretch is odd. You're definitely going to get a little angle. I oh, hit a sweep. Just top spin up and just go on the inside of the six and let it re- release. I think so. Oh, I think so. Oh, he, okay, he was, yeah, better. Better decision. This way you know what you have rather than hope for what you want. Yeah, and he's at the table and saw he could easily do that. And, again, that's a that's a pretty clear mind to me. That's like I, I'm not worrying so much. 
just going to take what the table gives me. Yeah. He recognized that that was convenient. And it's also a lot like what he would probably do on a nine-footer. So that's not changing much. That's a positive sign. Just a hint the wrong angle here, but I think he can just hold it there yeah, and just shoot from mid-table. For sure. And the thing is, you can learn from. He didn't let up, so when you don't let up, that draw actually grabs a little more, which slows the cue ball down. A lot of people want to hit it real subtle right there, and it'll wander on you. All right. And Jeremy's on the hill for his break oh, yeah. run quest. <laughs> <laughs> he still needs another one more game. I might have been house. able to bust the whole place with that number. <laughs> yeah. You say he's going to play two matches. You bet he breaks and runs eight times. I yeah. think you've got some takers. That would have been a good sweat, I think. Go SVB. Shannon Dalton playing bank pool with Alex Pagulian, outer table action. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Shannon hadn't played much pool, and unfortunately we're, he's got to leave, so we're not going to have him for the one pocket or the nine ball, but it just shows you his pedigree, how he's playing here. <laughs> and, of course, he's got several banners up here and definitely a couple at least I know of in the banks, maybe three. Oh, he took speed off. I don't know if you noticed it, but. He ranged in on a couple balls. The one ball checked up over Ooh. the corner pocket here. Pretty Ugl open layout with the exception of the six. Ugly six ball. It's real close. It's kind of one of those tie-ups. If you had ball in hand, you might be able to put it in a position to shoot it in this side pocket here. But whew, it looks yeah. like a pretty small zone anyways. It's not easy to attack it here either, safely. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt he was trying to get at it right there, the way he stunned it. Maybe not. Man. He'd love to have the angle to take a chance now, maybe at it with the five kind of cuttable, but... If he could get over, he could run the ball two rails right at it. Mm -hmm. You know, if he could draw the cue ball between the 6-8 and over, he could definitely get an attacking angle. Uh, that's what I thought Oh, what do. a great shot. Great shot there. Because coming off the five, you're sort of betting that it's all or nothing, and there's a lot of ways it doesn't give you a good shot after you took the gamble. But if you could do it here. Yeah, and he's still got work. Just because the eight ball, it's kind of a... You know, if you have to draw to get the line from here, the speed can get away. So he's got to take a, maybe a little more of a cut or a little more gamble with the he cue might, ball. That's on top of the six. It. That's on top of it there. He's going to have to hope that that settles. And it did. I don't know if it has settled where he can play it, but it's settled. It's very thin to the corner pocket. I think it plays. Right. And it takes him towards the seven a little bit. Like... You know, these are the toughest to judge because there is no line there, right? You mm -hmm. just got to feel it. Get a little more cling. You have to cut uh, it yeah, thinner. Cut it. Yep. He knew. He recognized you have to cut it way thinner. Well, Shane. He may have gotten fortunate here. It's close. Here's it? another look at that draw shot. Look yeah. at that. Zoom. I don't blame him at all with the way the five laid. Just, get, just to draw off of the angle he had on the five, it's hard to slow the cue ball down. Well, he's queuing up as if he can go straight at it, so he's not blocked at all. Slow back and through. Now that's a little hot. He overcut the ball if you get a look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to criticize it that he overcut slightly and pocketed the ball on a hard shot. So. Yeah. But he's got to make another one. Yeah, that's kind of the first time I saw him kind of like... Uh, Get to where he's like a little more serious business like he used to be, meaning like he's a little upset at himself right there for overcutting that ball. And necessarily Ooh, not a bad yeah. thing for him to be a little upset at himself. <laughs> a real sweet shot there. Yeah. Just kind of stop here, get in the natural angle. Deep, pay attention here, though. This table will not give in. 
Yeah, I think he learned that lesson in game number three. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, and back at the table to break in what will be game number eight. Five two. And Van Boning extending his lead now to three games, five games to two. Heading into rack eight, he'll have the break. So we'll see if he holds the pause a little longer when he breaks. I think mm -hmm. just like pool, the backswing gets better. The last one was just perfect, in my opinion. Got to love the quality of the play thus far. Van Boning in the finals playing a 930. Still needs to break and run out one more time for Jeremy to be able to collect here. <laughs> yeah, we haven't even got to play. They're taking our table away tonight, and we ain't even <laughs> got to play our set yet. Huh? All right, watch the pause, right? A little calmer on the back, all the way through to the center of the table, just like that. One ball got kissed around. Something fell, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't see what it was, but. Yeah. Tricky little shot. Just because he's got to dig a little bit. You always want to come back to that rail, you know, that reference, right? Yep. And it gets you uh, a little closer to the two probably, but the four and the side pocket are a little bit of worries. Elevated digging down and then just to drop straight back to the middle of the table, not easy. Yeah, again, slow walk it a little bit. Trust your stroke. Yeah, he did. He, he overcooked it just a hint. Well, when you swing better, you get more out of it a little bit. So I think he's okay. He's got enough angle to come across and play short side. And besides the result, Mark, mm -hmm. I don't think he's that upset with how he hit it. I really don't. Yeah, he got through it real pure. Yeah. Well, look how good it held its line. Yeah, that was always going to be a hard shot. No doubt about it. Yeah, they, 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 no kiss shot on the four at first. Maybe I thought a force too attached. And uh, yeah, this uh, is a little awkward here. Conrad's got a, a, a kind of a contortion bridge, and he's got to draw off the four ball to a a tough hit into the pocket. So he's going to have to come with a pure shot and don't think the four ball can't get on in front of the cue ball here afterwards either well if he draws it like draws it that cue ball is going to take off off the four with his good stroke i think yeah this is a tough one here that that's the speed i'm talking well yeah you see what i mean how oh the four absolutely ball can yeah get in there and uh that shot when they're in there it's almost always hit thick mm -hmm. it's just that ball being there you just mm -hmm. have to, what you have to do is you say Okay, I can shoot it and make a good hit. Now I got to just totally ignore the four being there. Right. That's the only way you really get into the contact point. The stroke quality wasn't there like we've seen from him either. It just seemed a little bit hurried. Yeah, he just didn't like it at all. <laughs> I think I think he was a little discouraged yeah. with it, Mark. Nobody would like it. Yeah. Yeah. Third shot, but he's got to come up with another one here. Always the decision here. Uh, I think with a high ball and just a maybe a sliver of right, an eighth of an inch, maybe less, you go by the five two rails. I would rather do that, take my chances on the mm -hmm. speed than put inside English here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it plays much easier if you can. Avoiding the five rather than going into it, just like Jeremy said. Yeah, you gotta gamble a little bit coming across, but that's just part of it. Oof. And that was the stroke again. That wouldn't hit perfect to the pocket but when the stroke's a little better the pocket's a little bigger yeah for sure that plus if uh if you're playing good <laughs> you know 
it's one of those things where when you almost miss, that's how you know you're playing good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anybody that made a lot of putts in one day playing golf, they weren't all the center of the cup. You know, you just you putt better, you give the give yourself a better chance, just like pool. Even uh, that shot was a good tester. Well, that yeah, and that transition, man, that's going to get a lot out of the ball. I love it. The one thing I love about Shane's game is it, it just proves that someone willing to work hard, you can get a payoff. Yeah. And he's human, too, as far as, like, uh, oh, nice stroke there. He got a little more out of it again than he probably expected. But still, he's going to be okay. He's just going to have to work more on the 8 to the 9 mm -hmm. now, which is, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, you'll get in tune with it more you do it with that stroke, with the better transition. But him, what I was saying, he's human as far as, you know, he's done everything in the world, right? But if he can look towards even hitting the ball better, that keeps him going as well. You know what I mean? Like, it's not mm -hmm. just winning titles and stuff. It's uh, he, he maybe needs a little more than other players at the time in his career. That's this is, why, this got ahead. funny because it's a little bit heavy. Yeah, he's got to apply a little inside just a skosh. Ugh. Just a little. It's Maybe not much. He, he looks like he's going to go two cushions here. Yeah, he's got a little left English. But the thing is, float in there. Remember, always float. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. A little inside on there. Good job. Yeah, another thing that 10 footer, I think, gives you a little more space to float into and not worry so much. But before, when he was uh, not this past year, he played great. But before, it looked like when he got deep in the tournament, it's almost like, how many more titles am I going to win? And he'd press a little bit. Now he looks uh, just kind of like he's playing. All right. Usually likes to stun two rails off this shot. Mm, high quality stroke. I was just watching the arm. That was a break and run, too, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it was. He drew the ball. No, he overcut the two ball. Excuse me. He overcut the two ball. He overdrew on the one and then overcut the two, and then yes, Conrad went for right. that shot. Yeah. yeah. So, he had a chance for you. Yeah. Your horse let you down a little he bit. He hit there. the one too good. Otherwise, <laughs> he was out. I didn't know you could hit one too good. <laughs> Pool players always say that. I hit it too good. Okay. Well, just imagine if he wouldn't have missed the nine earlier. Of course, yeah. we don't know what would have transpired since. Things could have gone the other way. But Well, 6-2, but it's really been all Van Boning, and it really hasn't been much to uh, – Conrad hasn't made much – he just hasn't had much to shoot at. I like what he did to Lee Van a little bit early. Yeah. Yeah, once we get our first stat. See those side ones mm -hmm. and the four railers missing as well? Hmm. So a little complications uh, at the moment for for Conrad on the break. And when we get our stat, the one that you always talk about, the ball's pocketed, right? We'll see that um, mm -hmm. when we first get it. Now, this is that swerve shot that you have to hit with pace to be able to spread and get some separation. Touchy shot. Oh, he didn't have to curve it. I thought he had to curve it, Mark, the hmm. way he was cueing. Got a generous clip on the two. Yeah, and first kind of like shrugs of the shoulders a little bit we've seen from in the tournament from Conrad, and I understand completely. <clears throat> so he must be just narrowly hooked. Mm -hmm. Here's our TPA, 63 to 15, each mm -hmm. with six errors, which seems like a lot for both, but... Nice hit. The one's going to lay up maybe. No, get past the side. Mm, great job. Now the six, okay. If you feel like there's a good path for the bank and the one around, you can kind of mm -hmm. see how the six lays. It's yes. very hard to scratch but mm -hmm. inside that ball. It's almost like when you get a ball out playing one pocket, right? Right. When there's less than a ball's width. You know, and sometimes you can drive this one around and follow towards that six. 
the the question is the eight ball if that's what you're going to play yeah if you feel good about the path i'm saying you know yeah and when i say the eight ball that means the one ball hitting the eight ball right but, but yeah that's but a there's great not job. a lot here there's not a ton you know and so that sometimes justifies the risk of you know taking care of the cue ball and hoping that the one ball clears the eight or either collides with the eight that causes a problem I think he's doing that with a mild speed or stunning. Okay, he just he caught the 10, but he was playing a similar shot, mm -hmm. trying to bang it around and go down to the end rail. Make so sure. running good. Yeah, make sure to get that cue ball down near the end rail. Well, yeah, look where the two's at. If, he, if the one's past the side and you even let him see it, he's got to make one heck of a shot to get back right. on the two. And again... Conrad comes to the table with an awkward kick or mass A. He's got to go by the 10, I think, between the 8 and 10. Well, he's going high velocity. Yeah. Okay. I mean, usually one railer's out in the middle of the table unless you're really confident you're hitting it. Hitting it. <laughs> okay. Looks like he can shave this in. And can he hold for the, like, go Oosh. into the 10 maybe or something to it's hold? Not fun to have to shave this and go soft speed. Well, soft speed, he might catch he the banking? six. He might be banking this. I think he's cutting it. Oh, he is banking it. Oh, he's feeling it. He's feeling pretty good about it. He knew it led the position here, so I could just see the way he, he, he was made up his mind right away when he looked at it. He saw that shaving was going to be problematic to get on the two, mm -hmm. and so he just felt like this was his best chance to capture this rack was take on a a somewhat routine bank, not an easy bank, nor a dead bank, but a, a fairly routine, comfortable bank. Yeah, under pressure, they're rolling it, and this rack lays tough, and we talk about when they lay tough, so he's going to have to make a few uh -oh. more shots. He hit it perfect. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> I guess that's the route he was playing. Yeah. I think so. I really do. And he, he knew if he came across the eight, he probably has a shot anyways. Mm -hmm. So... And you and I discuss it every time he plays, I think, that when the balls lay tough, he, I think he likes it better. You know, he just, and I think he's a bigger favorite when the balls start to lay tough. Yeah. Taking dead aim there. Hmm. He is playing good. You know, a little pinch draw, the five's got a pocket. No reason to really move the ball too much. Maybe 20 inches back where his bridge hand is. Oh, he came back from the side. Maybe the five's tight or something? Yeah, I think he felt like that played the easiest okay. for him. Yeah, okay. Th the five looking at the overhead could be a little tight as well. Okay, he's got to manufacture three rails between the eight and ten maybe oh, when he shoots the six. I felt like he could hold it here for the cut. Okay, he is holding it. Just to pull it out one rail, though. That's why I was wondering, is he going to is he gonna come three mm -hmm. rails now between the 8 and 10 is what I was saying. I see. Yeah. I think that's what he's going to do, huh, Mark? That, that seems like the smart shot. Unless you think he can just draw it back, but it looks mm -hmm. like he's going inside three rails. Yeah, it looked yeah. As he set up. It was a little thin to draw. Pretty. Yeah, and he's still got a lot of work, the 8, 9, and 10. He's perfect, though, to be able to go shoot the 8 and swing underneath the 10 to come back. You can you can stun out to try and get straight if you want. I think he's going to pull it for the angle. Oh, he tried to get straight. Wow. Very good shot. And he's a little off angle. But he if is, he plays for more angle, yeah. he easily draws by the 10. I think he was trying to stun to get straight in on the eight to draw back just naturally at the nine. Ooh, the bridge. Oof. That's not fun. He's pretty confident with it, though. Shooting downward. Tips a long ways from the cue ball here. Uh, yeah, man. the left spin was hard. That and was the hard part. Elevation. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, he was trying to do a lot there. Not sure what he was pointing his finger at. Was he pointing his finger at short side? Like he's got a draw underneath the 10 here? I thought he, yeah, he's got a little angle. I'm surprised he's not 
really looking at top inside, trying to get by the side pocket for the cut on the nine. He's going to go and draw his ball, it looks like, for short side on the nine. Well, we've watched him play. His draw is so good. I think he's not as comfortable. Yeah, watch the scratch. Oh, he stunned it. Nice mm -hmm. shot. Look at this shot. Really nice. Look at that ball roll. Wow. He gets effortless draw. He's just so comfortable. And I don't think he's as effective because he just doesn't have the confidence. He doesn't use the top spin as much. Good job there. 6-3 is our score. Just a big game there. Six games to three now. Yeah, the finals is a race to 11 still. And Here's that shot again. You yeah. see the elevation and the tip being four inches away, and then the squirt from the side spin. And it doesn't take much. That's down on most any table. Yeah. Barely missed it. I kind of feel like he overlooked position there. If he pulls the six up to side rail, and he obviously had an angle to do so because he stunned it so much to get there, right? So if he pulls it up, he gets a nice little draw angle on the back side of the 10, right? Further proof of what you're saying, he was playing to that side of the pocket with side spin to get a little throw so he could come straight back. Right, right, exactly. And I don't think he could have gone around the 10, to be honest with you, on that shot. It was the ball before that kind of got the best of him. He's pouring him in the sides, gets a kiss, but it doesn't cost him as he's looking for a pocket for the one ball. Oh, this is a pretty shot. Mm -hmm. He's going to take it on. It's a pretty shot, but mm, as long, Yeah, as long as the two goes easily for him, mm -hmm. you know, I think he tries to roll this in the corner myself. I'm trying to see, is there a safety better? Can he edge the one and maybe go by the five behind the ten? I don't think he's of the mind to want to play safe here. No, I don't. Most of the greats aren't. The thing is, is he going to run it and maybe get different position because he didn't look at the two by the eight at all oh that's one of the prettiest shots in pool Gorgeous. running across the middle Gorgeous. of the so table look at this yeah. control for position yes, to just a two-thirds of a pocket here yeah Ooh. how'd you like to have him as your scotch doubles partner? yeah i would like it where you want shake yeah well now well i know well, you know. Yeah, you're you're thinking the eight breaking runouts is what you're thinking of. Oh, I forgot about that for <laughs> well, for a second, for a sure, moment. Now, sure. no, seriously, I was what I was thinking about is you know back when we used to talk about Shane and how dominant he can be, and man, the draw stroke he's hitting it better. Is, I hope he realizes that he's just hitting it a little cleaner, so he's getting a little more out of it. Um, got a little out of line here, and he doesn't want to have to elevate. So. You know, this shot, it can, it can kind of play nice if you go up and down the table and just let it come back up Yeah. the second one. Well, the thing if, is, go ahead, Mark. I'm I was going to say, if he goes softer, the 10 becomes an issue. So well, he was just eyes at size and your shot up, and this is the reason why. Shane doesn't like to put a lot of tip position on this. If you don't mind putting like a tip of left, you're going to beat the 10 all day because you're hitting it thicker, right? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't like to do that as much. He likes to more pop the ball. Oh, wow. How good is he playing? <laughs> Excuse me. What a but shot. that was center, more center ballish, right? No, you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. But the th thing I was talking about before, we used to talk about Shane and, you know, players would discuss, um, you know, why is he dominating? What, what's going on here? And a big part of it is when a mistake does happen, his break shot is so powerful. You know, he's just, it's, he's not going to dog the break after missing another ball, right? And it just gets him kind of like, you know, he just made a big mistake in the last game, right? Another one here, it looks like, to be honest with you. And he's got a real first shot, which is maybe going to be a saving grace. But Yeah, that's not an easy real first shot, however. No, and it doesn't agree that much with the speed right. to hold the nine. In fact, depending on the speed he hits it and the spin he hits it, he may even hit before the side and go into the nine. That's if he makes it. But I was saying that his break shot itself kind of mm -hmm. like lets him overlook the mistake beforehand a lot of times. How good is oh he? Oh, my goodness. What a shot. What a shot with speed control. Yeah. Man, that was a long way from the end rail there. <laughs> Shane Van Boning. And I'll tell you, uh, I know Efren's your guy, and he's a lot of our guys, but and probably the best rail first player ever, Efren. 
but Shane is real nervy with the rail first. Like he understands that I got to hit it soft to hold position, even though it's a touchier shot. I'm going to shoot it that way, and uh, that's something to say. I tell you, world class. Is that his breaking run out that you needed? Oh there? man, I think show it was. me the money. First, yes. first winner of the of the week. <laughs> well, that's incredible. Yeah. You can see the heart pumping. He's he wants it. He's feeling it. Look at the chest going. I mean, it's uh, he's settling himself down there as Conrad takes the table. So out of forty racks that Shane has won thus far in the tournament, fourteen by virtue of break and run up. Yeah, that's uh, forty racks. That's thirty thirty five percent. 35 35-ish, maybe 37. I got to That'd be take really a strong if we were playing nine ball. That would be elite world class. Oh, good break. That's the one he needs. Oof. Yeah, that is a good break. Look at this. Yeah, what's the nine and the Don't four going to do? Don't hook him. Give him a chance here. Yeah. He'll take this, though. Yep. Oh, yeah. It can definitely be a lot of glitter than this. Now, depending on how thick and thin he, that he plays it to the pocket here, it's all about the speed. Don't really see many problems unless he catches it a little thick. It may be a little slower than he wants. The thing is here is make sure you add a little of that spin. You know, you can hit a little few places and throw it back, right? Now, Beautiful per perfect shot. speed. Beautiful. Seven to three after ten games, so definitely a match. Perfect cue ball with the four not having the pocket by the nine. Stunning all the way across, get to the corner. And it fell a little funny. I don't know if he can draw back past the side. I don't think so. So drawing across is a little funny as well. I don't know how he's going to play this, Mark. High ball? Uh, he might be able to just stun forward and play it from a little more range. He can, I like the high will. ball, I think, looks just like tracking right at it. Looks like he's thinking the way you're thinking. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times you wouldn't go forward to come down here. But it, all right, he's going to go ahead and bring it past. I think the high ball. He's such a good shooter. Make sure you stay in position the entire shot with the high ball. Good shot. Yeah, good stroke. Probably got a little more out of it than he intended, so he's a little thinner than he wanted. Hard for the reach on the left. He yep. can do it, to, mm -hmm. you know, cutting it to the lower right, but I, I think the lower left is the, is the play. You let it run here, Mark, or you try to kill it? I mean, either pocket, you have to make that decision, right? You do. This is thin enough, but sometimes from our vantage point, it's not as comfortable looking as these guys feel when they're playing it. So now he's looking at the other pocket, so it must be pretty darn thin. Yeah, and this one helps the cue ball a little bit more, I think. Yeah. Beauty. Right in the line. Mm, what a pure stroke that was. Man, you got to like the way he settled himself, too. You know, things haven't gone his way so, so much in this match. Easy to look at something like that as, uh, you know, oh, that's just how the match is going. You know, he took his time and figured it out. Yeah, adversity's coming, so you've got to be positive to play at this level. You're going you're gonna to definitely have some struggles. That positive mindset really helps because it keeps the enthusiasm high. If you're prone to be a little bit negative at all, it can really quickly get you into the death spiral. Yeah, and to me, it just doesn't seem like Conrad anyways, you know? Mm -mm. Like he's getting out of his, uh, yeah, you know, him. All right, looks like he's got to go high ball through it, or is he stunning hard two rails? Okay. And that's where really Simona's cloth really helps. Wasn't a ton of angle there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but with a good stroke, you can get a lot out of it. Or, you know, today's cloth. Very, very good. Seven four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. This guy's got a heck of a chin, Conrad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. How about Ricky down there? Probably the longest days of anyone in the Bigfoot Challenge. Right. Of course, all the guys in the back working and never get as much credit. And obviously the fans who make it, make the show really. Well, it's definitely a packed house here tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're standing in the rafters here. Oh, yeah. See the pause at the cue ball, back swing. There it is. Little, Six balls tracking. Yeah, a little flatter. One See. ball's over there by the corner pocket. He's going to have a shot, looks like. Yeah, these are bonus racks Ooh if you bet the number. <laughs> Slow down there. <laughs> you only get to win once. <laughs> okay, I'd probably stay away from the inside here. Uh, you might float across, get a little thin, but I don't know. The inside ain't bad. The only problem with the inside is that's where you can get straight in on the rail. Uh, that could be a problem. Oh, he just went with a high ball, so he's not spinning away. He's never going to be far away from it. And that's being at the table in a real smart shot. Mm-hmm. That's not one that's used as much going underneath the ball with just a straight high ball like that. It's uh, usually you add a little inside on that type of shot for one reason or another. Well, he's really feeling the speed. He got right through that little stun draw. Got the cue ball within a foot and a half of the three ball right on line. I think he wants to go below the nine here. This is a funny ball, the way the five's sitting. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe. Oh, I do too. No, it's in there. He wants to get down there, I would think. Yeah, yeah. then he can just draw down the rail rather than yeah. rely on the and, cut. And you wanted as much bounce off of that rail as you could without getting snookered. That way you're as full on the five mm -hmm. drawing up the rail as you can. Just slow draw. Don't try to get into it, just like that. Eight past the 10 mark? Looks like it does. That would make it play a lot easier if it does, so you don't have to go down and get in the side pocket. Well, wrong -o. Wrong again, Wilson. Yeah, but it's kind of like what we talked about earlier. The further you go, the more you get off the rail with a slight angle, right? So now he takes a little, kind of an easy shot in the side that he can do a lot with. If he, if he holds for the corner, he's just going to be barely off the rail, most likely, unless he really jams the seven. So I, I probably would have maybe held for the corner just because that's how I play a lot of times. But man, it was kind of hard to, hard to say that wasn't pretty correct. Well, the other part of it, too, is that we're not positive it even went easily past the 10. True that. Right? True <laughs> that, yeah. Nice spin upward. Gorgeous. Fourth break and run out of the set. Van yeah. Boning now in front. That's, eight eight eight. That's really the difference in the Stay match, is just the break and run out. Yeah, it is. And again, after a mistake, and then after his opponent makes a beautiful break and run, that big break off it puts him in position uh, to keep that lead at eight to four. Might be breaking runs from here on out. From both <laughs> guys, I mean. Seriously. I think uh, Conrad realizes he's got to let it out a little more on the break for those side balls. Two and the four behind the one ball, the seven nine on the wing. Uh, a little 
little more lighter and that they're not working right now. That lighter speed is just not getting them for some reason. All right, two goes in the side. I don't expect much movement on the cue ball here. The thing here, he can just roll this and gain a little bit of an angle to go forward for the three in the same side pocket. And after that, it should be in a real good spot. Just like that. <clears throat> real nice shot. Real subtle. Got the easy angle to let the cue ball go down by the three. Not an easy two ball. You still have to concentrate. Yeah, just make sure you don't overrun. You can handle a little cut the other way, but if you overrun, it could get real funny getting on the four. Yeah, you see he's made sure. Oh, he missed that ball. Wow, didn't expect that. And had he hit that into the pocket, the cue ball would have played nicer for him, too. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this little cut into the side has the four ball right in front of it. I don't know if he can get past it without nicking it. If he has to go into the four, then the rest of this rack plays tough. I think the three goes by the nine. Oh, though. he was able to get to the inside by overcutting the pocket and then use inside spin. Yeah. He didn't th fall great on this, but that's what he was trying to do was come back. I thought he had eased that in, though, and just play the three by the nine. But I thought the three went by the nine anyways in that lower corner. Just kind of use the four to hold the ball, you know? He, This is the part that I've think mm. been really impressed with. Now, this one didn't work out, but mm -mm. the entire tournament, he's played some super safeties. That one seemed quick. It seemed, I don't know, he didn't seem very committed to it. A little frustration. Maybe. Now, does Shane go attack here? I know this is a tough angle, but the great players sometimes will take this on. Looks like he's banking it, actually. Oh, he stiffed it home. <laughs> the bank was down, and the cue ball still had a little inside spin on there, so he really stiffened that one up. It's off speed. Now, this is a, a little bit tricky combination. And this is the tightest pocket on the table, by the way. Now, the key to this is don't baby it that much. If you hit it good, the four will hold. Rail first. No overcutting it. Okay. I think he shot at the right speed, but a little frustration there. But if you want to learn something about that bank shot, man, that was a lot of angle for mm -hmm. that he held the ball off of. But when you hit it full in that face, you can really twist it. Big shot for Conrad. I don't know. That looks overcut. Funny little shot here with the nine there. And he's just going to kind of creep it for the cut on the five, I think. Yeah, like that. Just that way you get past the nine. You know, don't try to get too much beauty, right? Yeah, just gorgeous shot. A real subtle thing. People wouldn't recognize what that really took to get that ball to come backwards but not overdo it. He was trying to get the most out of that one. Yeah, a little light on his paws again. But that's okay, that happens, right? Six, I don't know if it passes the seven. I think it does. Ooh, that's pretty speedy. That may be over the seven or past it even. Yeah. I don't think he was coming for the side. He looked, maybe he was. The six, I thought he looked to see if it went in the corner. And with a level ball, this is, uh, you got to get through the ball or else a little weak stroke you could scratch. Right. The eight oh, he ball shot the corner. Definitely emboldened you. Oh. oh, I thought he was shooting the cut shot. I didn't realize the eight, the, the eight wasn't in the way. Excuse me. I thought he was playing the side is my point. I think the eight ball gave you a little extra confidence. No, that was absolutely there. the right shot. I, I just kind of glanced uh, uh, and thought the eight was kind of in the way of the pocket more than helping the pocket. You know, both of the uh, Conrad errors in this rack, it's almost like it took a toll. Like a, he got a bunch of body blows in a boxing match and finally here later stages starting to wear on you a little bit. 
Okay, he's going with a high ball here. I wonder if it's just straight high. See that? How he likes yeah. to arc it? Mm -hmm. He does that a lot on the short rail and the long rail where most would stay away from that shot. F Filler hits that shot really well under pressure because he, again, doesn't want so much side spin sometimes. But Shane kind of acts like uh, he can't wait till that shot comes up. <laughs> Where I'm right. like, oh, I got to shoot this one? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's called embracing the set. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Very good. So we'll just excuse unlucky game number 13. The guys stumbled a couple times. Now Shane to break in game number 14. Both of them lost a few points on their TPA during that rack. Here's our rack track. Yeah, National See, Beard Academy. Went 2 2 to begin with, and then it's been all Shane except for two racks there. Thereafter. Yeah, and really, if you talk about opportunities, that third game he could have had easily, that nine ball right, and then another game in game number nine. So, of course, Conrad, a professional, been around. Even though he's a young man, I consider him a pretty good veteran of the game. I think he'll have he's having a little talk with himself and saying, hey, I'm not out of this. Yeah, he really has had some chances here that yeah, maybe he didn't even figure to get that here later on he's not capitalizing like he was throughout the rest of the tournament. Oh, balls are raining in. One ball settles into a place where Shane will not have a good shot. Yeah, the four could be a little tricky, but he's got a beautiful kick shot. I mean, getting the one by the four may be a little hairy, but I think he takes this on. Unless he can see it, he may sliver the ball. He might even be able to kick this in the side. Oh, it's light a little bit. Oh, it's perfect, actually. The one's going to release. Hard to pass that one up, mm -hmm. even if you don't get the snooker. Yeah, Efren's going to hit that uh, towards the side every time like that, and you're going to think he made it. He's going to scare you every time that he made it. Well, the good thing is if he rattles the side, he really got the cue ball in the prime position for the nine ball to cover up. And the thing is with his lead, there's no question mark he was supposed to take that kick on. Uh, you know, if it's like 8-8, eight, eight, not saying you won't take the kick, but you might think about it for a little bit more before mm -hmm. you take on the shot. All right, we're going to get to see him go upstairs with the cue a little bit, the back end of it. I don't think he can roll it. Just a matter if he feels like kind of stopping or getting into the cue He ball. might draw back to play a beard on the seven. Oh, he was going all the way to get the combo. Yeah, he hit a little bit of left English, mm. and the cue ball kind of. I mean, just a hair, and it kind of deflected into the right side of the one a little bit. This is odd. He's going to try and nip it. Like that. And look how good the speed is. Uh, makes the beard on the seven much more difficult getting the cue ball over there. Yeah. Bank shot? Yeah, maybe. Well, yes, is the answer. Is he going to have enough energy to get there? No. Uh, it's going to get near that rail, though. Is the seven big enough to go rail first here, spin this ball in? Is the seven helping you at all? I think yeah, it is. Yeah, the seven is. The issue is a scratch. Scratch up in the corner, huh? All right. He's not even going to fool with it, it doesn't look like. Well, I think he's the best ever, in my opinion, at that. That's wicked good there. Yeah. And to me, prior to that was Earl. Yeah. I, I always thought those two, uh, I've seen edge the ball better than anyone. Oh, my. That really puts you in the bind. you got to come up with a big shot here to escape Shane's wrath. Oh, he hit it sweet. I'll well, tell you that. He may not get the snooker, right. but he hit it pretty decent. As good as he could, Shane had him handcuffed, and he just had to give up something. Yeah, I think the way the match is gone, it's a little energy has been knocked out of the sails, right? A little wind out yes. of the sails of Conrad. Yeah, not quite as uh, clear thinking. Definitely his execution is down a little dab. I'll tell you, 
Sweet stroke there. Look where he put the six, though, that little bump there. Mm -hmm. And got flat on the four. This became really awkward. Now, if the five goes cleanly by the six, it's not too bad. Well, you got a long ways to or go to get that. Seven, yeah, five I'm, by the seven. Yeah, five by the seven. I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think it does go cleanly by the seven easily. Okay. Well, the other side's okay. You can either draw off the five of one rail cross. You know, like That's here. A real good shot there. Yeah, this is the one rail cross I was talking about. Just a straight draw. Maybe a hint of left English, if you want. Good thing is a straight draw, you get a little closer to the six if yeah. you come across. Yeah, you hit this one hard. Yeah, he's drawing it nice, though. He's hitting the ball clean, you know. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Similar to before on that early, what was it, four ball coming across for the five in rack two or something like yeah. that. Don't let up. Go ahead and pinch the ball with that stroke. Just like that. Can't come across here. You got to go forward, I think. Back out to the center. Uh -oh. He might have overcooked this uh -oh. one. He did. He knew he... He didn't want to get, uh, he had a lot of ways to go there, but that was a little errant. Wow, this is huge here. He's going to, with a 9-4 lead, he's supposed to just take on the shot, knocking this in and trying to cut the 10 in from some distance. Is this some distance? <laughs> Double J? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah I'd say. Yeah, he's disappointed with himself psychologically for letting that cue ball get away. It went three feet too far. No reason for it. He could have stopped short. You know, there's always one side, short or long. In that case, you better be short because you're never hooked. When you go long, that's the dilemma you run into. Now, this is the fourth game that Shane has been willing to give up here with unforced errors. Yeah, and I think it's been common that when he hits it better, you're just going to get more out of it. He's not used to backing off, and maybe he just doesn't realize he's moving the ball a little easier. Oh, squeezed at home, and a big shot from Conrad. Yeah. 9-5 now. This is the first time that we he's had a, a break after a Shane mistake. Every other mistake from Shane, Shane's got to break and put a break and run or a real good rack together. So yeah. This now's the time. Man, just look at that. And that's only 30 bowls pocketed in five games and a few of them were just uh, cleaning up after a mistake from Shane. See a big crowd here. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Indiana, Elizabeth City. Or what is it, Elizabeth Town? We're near uh, New Albany, right yeah. across the river from Louisville. Yeah, I think Elizabeth City is yeah. last year's hometown. I think yeah. this is just Elizabeth. Indiana. Yeah. All right. Those high, those side balls been uh, giving him fits. We'll see if he can get something going there. Well, three looks good. One ball coming down. Is the nine ball going to be any kind of friend? He's okay. He's got a shot. A little awkward cueing, but he's definitely going to attack. 19.57 on the break demon, you can see there, in the lower right part of your screen. And just that straight draw to the end rail mark, looks like. Yeah, and just back up, going to play the two past the five. Nice shot. Really got the premium out of that. Yeah, not, got not, the cue ball close from an awkward angle. Yeah, it doesn't have to work the cue ball off the two to the four. That's huge. Uh, Stress-free there. Probably wants to get a little fuller on the four. Oh, he came back. Yeah, he just wants That's to get to the center of the table here. 
Yeah, but I thought this was a little thinner than this. I thought you'd want to be fuller if you're going to come to the center. Oh. Oh, he killed it nicely. Easily, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, just what the doctor ordered. Let's see if he can complete this break and run. Probably the first time a little light the whole tournament on the draw stroke. Yeah. You can see a little shake of the head there. Going to have to roll this one in. And drained it. Key ball's real close to the eight with hint of an angle, so we can do a lot of things here. Just going to get straight. No, he can go forward. Got to get the extension. Might draw it. You never know. Back to short side. Looks like the angle is forward, but. And he completes a nice breaking run there, much needed breaking run. First one of the match so far, Conrad Jusession. Six to nine. Shane Van Boney will have the break, chance to go to the hill. Yeah, it feels like, you know, after 15 games, the closest you can be is 8-7. All right, so it feels like it should be more than 9-6 kind of, but yeah, but we're not far from, from splitting it down the somewhat of the middle. The one thing you don't have to worry about, this match is still up in the air. Absolutely. That's the thing about pool, right? People here, and there's so many of them, they're very clued in on the sport and how it goes. I mean, you know, they realize how it can turn mm -hmm. easily, you know, and, and especially we're playing on such a tough table to where you know, you could miss any one ball yeah. at any time to, to make things different. A little more top there. I don't know if the one's going to agree on this one. Cue ball's getting a little covered up by the nine. Yeah. So. Looks like he got weird. It yeah. definitely did. He's not even looking at going at the one. He's looking at pushing out. So we know he's tucked onto the nine. Most 10 ball movement that I recall uh, in a long time. Yeah. On the break, I'll tell you that. There was one that went near the side pocket before, but been very little of those. He's almost got to roll out down here. I was wondering if he may make the three and get down there. I'm not saying it's any one way or another, just maybe to have a little more control. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he was a little snooping on it. And I'll tell you what, at first glance, I think Conrad made a pretty good decision here. I'm wondering if he's going to attack the bank. I think he is. I think he's going all out to win the game with this shot, and he may even play it with enough pace that the uh, cue ball comes on his end of the table now, and the one ball goes back to the other end. Maybe clatters into the three, or maybe go no, he's playing safe. No, he's going all out to make the See bank. you later. You gotta be kidding. Ten foot table, and gonna slow roll straight back. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, he's gotta keep his brain here because another tough one, but. That reminds me of Mika back at that world championship I was telling you about mm -hmm. when he won against Ralph. The whole tournament, he had a lot of those, and he just slow rolled them right on in and let me break and run three or four more racks on you. Tough ball now. So, not even close. Yeah, that's the It one. was weird. He got way long on his head. Things went awry timing wise on the yeah. swing. And I'm certainly not going to pick on Shane Van Boning. I'm just saying, but that was definitely a different swing than we've seen throughout the match. Right? I agree. Wasn't that the quicker one that you yeah. say his timing wasn't right? Yeah. And the, again, it's just the downswing responding. He just got a little quick bringing it back. And the one good thing is, you know, he didn't he didn't quit on it. He just backswing got a little quick, of course. <laughs> you make the 
TV shot with the straight back back <laughs> roll out, and then that next one is so darn tough. Ooh, I don't know if he's going to like this. He certainly didn't hit it quite how he wanted. He's going to have the side. Ooh. You could see a look to the to the clouds there that wasn't the best effort. He can't let up. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. And definitely a missable ball, uh, side or corner. And the seven's tight. Of course, you can see an 8-9 that you shouldn't really worry about too much because mm -hmm. the combo is pretty good. You don't have to get position on the 8. It's weird, the mentality with this. If, if your opponent leaves you this, you stab it on in. But if you leave it for yourself, you always feel like, ah, I should have been better, and now I'm going to have to get lucky to get out from here because I didn't plan yeah. for this. Well, every match he's practiced this shot. Every match I've watched him shoot it prior to the match three or four times. And he's been real good at it, by the way. And that one, again, I don't... I, Maybe it was because the position he had to play. Didn't seem like he got through the ball like, like we've seen him uh, the entire time. And you said it on the last stroke as well. And I think you were dead on that he let up as well there. What's he going to do? This is funny. I think he's coming on across to get back where he's at now. I agree. But the speed, right? And I think the seven is only a portion of the pocket. Still a tough shot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, disappointed. Yeah, that backswing's starting to get quick again, though. And you can tell because the pauses in the back is like uh, mm -hmm. very noticeable, yeah. let's say. If you were the coach, you'd call timeout and talk to him after this rack and say, oh, hey, yeah. look, those last couple, they're tough shots, but don't let them bring out that quick transition. Yeah, exactly right, Mark. And I don't know if this is going to get exactly the desired position as well. Yeah, he I think he's okay. Though. Yeah, he broke yeah. the plane of it just barely. And now it's just high right-hand English, and he can feather in between the eight and nine. Which is the route he should go, I believe. Uh, well, he might have even been playing for this route. No, I think he was. But yeah. now he's got he's to worry a little more, he's, just, I think. Meaning you're going to miss your target. Oh, that's mm. just concentration there mm. and, and worrying about, concentrating about the cue ball a lot. Hmm. Yeah, he's missed more balls in this set than he's missed in the tournament, I think. Yeah, and the way this lays is nothing nice uh -uh. because you have to avoid the 10, and you're not going to shoot a bunch of inside here to get the route right. Well, so. you're not going to worry about the 10. It's just topspin. Yeah, but I'm saying the angle uh, to get on the 8, you would love to be able to have the 10 not there, right? And, again, he was the same, really trying to worry about the route of the cue ball. <laughs> Wow. What do you do here, Mark? Maybe shoot the 7 off the back of the 10. Uh, the combination's tough. Well, I mean, yeah, what do you do then? <laughs> you can cross corner. Yeah, you know, I mean, you got to try to one-pocket cross corner. <laughs> yeah, but you got to kiss there. Inside, you're going to kiss it most of the time. Outside, you could kiss it. So I would do that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. What a shot. Well, I'd probably do that right there. <laughs> well, that's a good one. I like it. Couldn't hit it any pure. <laughs> what a shot. Well, now Conrad gets to break the balls. So That'll wake up the ways. crowd. Yeah, 65 yard field goal. Very still all the way through, like his countryman, Fortunsky. Oh boy, yeah. He's beautiful to watch on that type of shot. Yeah, and uh, the, the break hasn't worked out for Conrad that well in this match. I would guess he's going to make balls, and, and I don't know about a shot, but I bet he, gets, he keeps his turn at the table. Let's just pretend he breaks and runs out here. Boy, this is going to be exciting. Yeah. And Shane rarely takes a timeout. I, I haven't seen it a ton of times in his career. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't think that's probably going to happen unless Mother Nature calls him one way or another. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe gets a little thirsty or whatever. But uh, it wouldn't be a bad time. It wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, if he goes, if if he loses this rack, I would definitely take a timeout. But if it's foreign to him, you know, it's like someone that doesn't do it very too. often, right? Right. Absolutely right. That's the reason to not do it. Yeah, it's amazing because uh, we called it one of the strongest minds in pool, right, Shane Van Boney. Boy, 
you know, he was struggling a little bit, missing some balls, but that last shot has to embolden you and make you feel like, hey, I'm dangerous still. Oh, yeah. The 9 8 score, or 9 7 score didn't hurt from 9 4. Three in a row for Conrad. Two in the six, right behind the one. Oh, I thought he lost Two's it. Tracking. I thought he Got lost it. it. All right, another kiss on the cue ball. So he's going to be playing one heck of a safety or maybe a all off long rail bank from his opponent mm -hmm. in the last game. Yeah. To open. It's about the same job, but whew, nobody wants to play that ball. And he's getting down quickly, though. So is he going he's behind the pushing. four? I don't. Yeah, he's pushing out. Pushing? No, no, I guess not. I was going to say he's got to be going behind the four, and he better hope the one calms down. I think he's giving up a look here. Oh, I do too. Now this is a big shot because he's not going to slow roll it. Obviously, in the last couple he's gotten a little quick. Oh, he's taking the taking the wheels off the back there, so he may have to jump this a hair. That plays well if you're going to try to spike it back. Anyway. Well, the good thing is you, he usually doesn't get quick with the jump shot. You see how calm the backswing was there with the jump? Oh, he, he's boy. just always calm Whew. with the jump. What a shot. Really smooth. Stayed still. Yeah. And another highlight reel shot. Okay. He's draw the ball. This is the, a similar bank that he has to stick a little, but he probably draws back underneath him. Not only the, not a bad way to pocket the bank, but gives you the angle to come across. <laughs> wow. Oh, he's Extreme courage if you're banking this off-angle bank. He's, he's hitting it flat. Oh, golly. Drained it. Yeah. Hit the heart of the pocket. I want to tuck the cue ball away and play safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Mark, I mean, you know, he knows what his opponent's capable of, and that's just why these guys are so mm -hmm. great, because they're aggressive. All right. That's, well, and that's respect for your opponent, knowing that you – might not get back to the rack with another good shot like that, too, even though it's not 100% at all. All right, that was better. I wouldn't say it was his perfect backswing, but it Pretty was a darn lot good. better, yeah. Pretty darn good. He's going to love the results yeah. for sure. Now he's got to kill it just a touch, just because he's trying not to have to fool with the 10 mm -hmm. when he shoots the 7. Again, a little more space on the 10-footer to do this. Good, okay. Good, good. Good. <laughs> when he starts to take a little second look, it worries me. Now, this is another peculiar little situation. Does he have enough angle to get over easily? To get a, a decent angle on the eight? Well, anything. Just get away from the balls where he can get his bridge hand down. Yeah, I was wondering if he would pull it back trying to come some four rails tight here and drop on the nine. Another shot that he does like to play. So he'll flirt the side pocket off the first two rails. And then drop off the third rail down for the nine. Nice shot. Nice shot. And it's always a beautiful shot because it always looks perfect. Not only hit it great, but everything kills just right. You never have to worry about the speed. You can just let the stroke out. SDB's putting himself in a position where he's going to have two breaks to win this match. Mm -hmm. Along with two from Conrad if it goes that that far. Mm -hmm. There's the National Bayard Academy rack track. Conrad's had the best of it here at the end of the match, but again, those leads, uh, they really mean something. Well, the good news for me, I can only lose one more bet because he can only break and run one more time. <laughs> That's right. We'll figure out the number for next year when everyone's improved another ball t or two. <laughs> yeah, I know. I used to say every year, these guys can't possibly play any better, but I don't say that the last five years. Yeah. <laughs> every year, I'd be just I'd be amazed and stunned, but not anymore. And one thing you can learn, last break, don't let that make you back off. Like, still try to you know, get, a, get oh. what you wanted. And I don't think the rack opened that great again. The ten's in the identical place it was last time. Moving Boy, on the ten again. There was ball action and balls rimming the pocket. I really can't fault him. No, 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 effort. not the hit. I'm just wondering why the ten moves so much. I mean, we've seen the ten yeah. in its place the entire tournament. He's overhit this a little. Maybe the ten to give up the match. Hmm. 
get tucked up on the nine there a little bit. That helps. I'll tell you what, if he's in a, in a skinny here, he might come across the one and send the cue ball at the 10. And the reason why, with speed, mm -hmm. you can still hit a ball and let the cue ball run around the table. You might go between the 410 and let the cue ball run around the table. He's going at the two. Okay, that makes more sense. I think he's going at the two anyways. Yeah, I think so too. I think that looks more like a go shot. Just don't overhit it. Hit it clean like that. Make wow. the pocket bigger. Nice it's shot. there. It's there. He's going to have to make another nice one over the four, but he's got a shot. Wow. <laughs> what about, World class pool. That's what it looks like. What do you do for the three, though? Let alone pocket the one first, but. Mm hmm. Can you slow roll it and hold it for the side by the nine? He's willing mm. to take it on. Now, he may He's try looking. to use the six. Like, if he doesn't want to hit it light. You know, maybe two rails into the six, maybe. The issue is when you have to elevate to manipulate to the six, where this way you can just roll. Well, it's not as bad anyways. He's not directly over the four. I can see that now. So this is better. Super tough shot, nevertheless. Yeah. Okay. Well, he was taking a crack to win the match right there. Yes, he was. And Conrad's going to see about moving the cue ball. Getting across for the other side to me looks uh, very hairy. I think he's got to roll this light. Oh, he tried to get across. That better go. Yeah, I thought that was difficult because he had to stay real full. A lot of spin. Well, he got there. Yeah. Tough shot, though. You know, if you're feeling good, you kind of hit like a medium stun with just a hair left English, and you go side rail, in rail, and back up. Like a light stun, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I'm usually feeling that good at this point. I'm just thinking about trickling it in. Well, they, yeah, usually you're going to do that. Draw it or stun it. Now, he shot that shot a bunch of times in the tournament and never missed it. So you can't fault him, I don't think, the way he played it. He's got to play safe, huh? Yeah, this looks really weird. The scratch is right there. I don't think he can hardly bend it out of the scratch and still pocket the three. Well, the thing is, he's got to cut the three a little bit to get it to the rail. And that makes it very touchy to hold behind the five without going in the side pocket. I wonder if he's going to inspect a kiss shot off the three, off the five into the hole. Three off the five into mm -hmm. the corner, you know? If you know kiss shots, that looks like one you could measure out and get it right to me. That's you what know what it, this looks like? That's no. what he's doing. See? Yeah. If you know how to play kiss <laughs> shots. Oh, man. And, yeah. What a shot. What a shot. Okay, a 410 kiss shot again. Two kiss shots to win. Oh, he didn't play it. I didn't realize the, the four win even. Yeah. Well, I like that a lot better <laughs> than the, yeah. the kiss shot. <laughs> A little more draw than I expected. There. Yeah, I thought he would use a rail to come out for the seven. Now he's going to draw back out. I think he's just, you know, moving the cue ball a little easier when he swings better. I think that's pretty much everyone anyways, not just him. Yeah. Mm, good hit there. Yeah. Heighten the tip position a little bit. That way he didn't have to kind of like uh, guide it. He could just kind of stroke the ball a little more. Just a stop shot, play the eight in the side. Now it's just roll forward. Yeah, and Conrad. This is. I hope uh, he hangs his head pretty high because he played one heck of a tournament. Oh, yeah. And how, could you get any better preparation for the world championship in your home country next yeah, year? Yeah, right. right. And I think he had a lot of fun doing it. A lot to take away here. Plus $8,000. Chain Van Bone is our champion. There you have it. Conrad Jushishan will be back, I'm sure. He was a pleasure, but none better this week than SVB, Mark. Yeah, 8.49, TPA in the final match. Not as much match, but a great match nonetheless. Very entertaining. Just a have the and that concludes and our broadcasting day. Thank you for joining us and sharing your time. Drive safe and good night.